if you were to summarize how football analytics is used within clubs today, it would be these five slides which summarize it, uh, strangely enough. So uh, yeah, I've said plus minus models is used by various big clubs. The clubs that don't use plus minus models use the, the techniques I'm going to talk about now. Um, and first I'm going to, before I, before I uh, explain the techniques that they use, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the sort of stats you might see if you're a football fan, because I think that's illustrative of starting off. I, I went in, I wanted to find out actually what a typical football fan is um, experiences. And you of course see what different websites put up and who scored has a lot of stats on it and so on. But if you go into the stats center for the Premier League webpage, they offer you a range of statistics that you can have a look at. And goals and assists are, of course, their clean sheets. Again, that, those three are the, the staple of fantasy football um, appearances and minutes played. But then they, they basically have ones which I think are just sort of fun <laughs> things. So I think fans want to go in and they want to say, you know, how many big chances has a player missed? Uh, how many touches do certain players have? They have like um finding out who's who's hogging the ball too much who's been offside the most who's lost the ball the most who's cleared the ball off the line the most times and i thought that it was quite amusing that these were the stats that have been selected to uh, to show but basically with any of those types of stats what you can do is you can order the players according to those stats and that's what's been done here i took the touches one because you might imagine that it's a attacking winger or something who takes a lot of touches on the ball but it um or it might be a defender playing the ball backwards and forwards who takes a lot of touches and you found here that actually andy robertson has had the most touches this this season 439 touches according to the opta data um and then it was hoi Berry was very good against um, man united at the weekend and um he's also had 395 so this is this is defensive midfielder um left yeah I mean this some of it will be attacking um, touches some of it will be defending touches and but you tend to get players playing who are very central to the game um, who, who get a lot of touches but anyway the point I wanted to make here was that you can rank them from most touches to least touches and what I'm going to talk about now is percentiles so I would say that he Andrew Robertson is the hundred percentile um, toucher of the ball and in a bit, I'm going to talk about player radars. And if you've seen a player radar, the point I'm going to make here is that Andrew Robertson would be on the outside of the player radar. He would be touching the edge of the player radar if we were counting touches. I think maybe they should make some Premier League uh, player radars using big chances missed and clearances off the line. That would be quite interesting, actually. Player radars that the fans are actually interested in. And the point I wanted to make is that the stats seen by that, that was the stats seen by the fans, and I've maybe had a little bit of a laugh at that, but the stats um, seen by scouts typically aren't very different. So what I've done here is I've gone into Y Scout, which is the tool which all professional um, scouts use for watching players. It's primarily a video tool. Um, it does have the Y Scout is the same people who collect the data, but it's a video tool where you can watch a clip of any player anywhere in the world and you can they're all tagged so you can watch all of their attacking runs for example you can all watch all of their defensive mistakes and they've also collected a sequence of statistics with them and these are a few of them um goals and sister of course there shots on target is a big one um very correlated with expected goals um, passes, long passes, crosses, dribbles, duels, aerial duels. It goes along with um, interceptions and so on. And it tells you the number, the average per 90 for different players of these particular particular actions and the points that they got for those. Uh, they gives you, gives you the number of their actions and also the percentage success. So this is the number of aerial duels typically per match, 8.61 and 64.6% .6 of those aerial duels are successful. And that's the type of stat that a, a, a scout working inside the club will be most familiar with because that's the stats that's presented to him or her on the um, inside the tool that they're working on. 
but these stats tend to be very difficult to interpret. I mean, long passes, 8.49, is that good or bad? Crosses, 0.17, is that good or bad? Really difficult to know if, if how you should weight those types of actions. So what you do is you do percentile rankings. And just to make sure you've got exactly what I mean by percentile rankings, I've got a little example here. I've, I've written um, a sequence of eight very English names here on the left. I've given myself 31 points in this particular thing. I don't know, maybe it's defensive mistakes or maybe it's uh, shots or something like this. Anyway, you've got these numbers here. Um, 30, 31, 45, 38. And all you do to get percentile rankings is sort the people. So let's actually say, let's normally you want to have the good thing um, to have the higher number, or you're going to be top if you've got the good thing. And so we'll say 45, we'll say this is, what would be what would be a good um, statistic that well per 90 what well, comes up as 45 I don't know forward passes something like that forward passes per 90 and that's what's uh, what's shown there and what you do is you basically sort the people Andrew had 45 points so he was ranked one William was in second place he was ranked two and so you just rank them one down to eight uh, the worst person here and then the equation for the percentile is basically the top player is considered to be the 100 percentile and the bottom player is considered to be the 12.5 percentile. There is, there is actually some room for maneuver about exactly how you assign a percentile here. But I think this, this one works quite well because you want to have the top one as 100. And so you just put the top one as 100 and then you do one over eight is the difference to the next percentile. So one over eight is um, 0.125. So that's 12.5%. So that's the difference here. Then to the next player is 75 to the next player here. If you have a tie, then you just take the average of the two values. And so that's what's shown here. And then finally, I'm all the way down here at the bottom with 12.5 in the bottom percentile. So the percentile is just ranking turned into a percentage. And what's really lovely there is it tells you how you compare to all the other players in the league. And so that's not done. That's not what these percentages are in the Y Scout thing. And it can actually tell you who's doing how many compared to all the other players in your league, how many long passes are you doing? Um, and once you've got the percentile, you can do stuff like this. This is slightly difficult to read. Um, so I'll read out what I've, I've got here. This is from a very nice Medium article that I read a few years ago, uh, which was trying to work out who the best defenders were in the championship. And I like this because I went back to it the other day. Well, I went back to it yesterday when I was preparing for this lecture. And I found that Adam Webster transferred to Brighton for £2.25 million pounds or something like that. And he was bought by Bristol City for £4 million. So this was a nice piece of business by Bristol City, but quite nicely, this blog post actually spotted well in advance that um, Adam Webster was somebody to, um, to keep an eye on. And what they've done here, what, what they've done here is that they've taken the various statistics that they've measured. I'll say what these are. These are percentage aerial jewels one. This is uh, tackles, interception and blocks. So these are defensive actions. You see here it says, P adjusted, that means it's possession adjusted. So per possession, how many tackles, interception and blocks did you do? Then there's dribbles, deep completed crosses, passes per 90, final third passes per 90, through balls per 90, um, average shot, medium pass length, uh, forward pass accuracy, pass accuracy. And they've ranked it here zero to 100. So 100 means that you're the absolute best player in the league. And Adam Webster is top out of all centre backs. I, I forgot to mention he was a centre back. He is top out of all centre backs in final third passes per 90, which is really important to a team like Brighton who want to play a possession based football and also have a good team of anal analytics people who are, are doing the data for them. But they want to play possession based football. So this final third passes per 90. He is top in the championship up to that point in last season. He's also above average or above the median 
in all of these things. He's top um, almost yeah, top 85 percent in through balls. Um, yeah, and, and so on. So you can basically see his ranking in these particular stats compared to the league. The reason I'm not going to go into this blog post just now, but the reason I recommend you do it is because it's not when you're looking at this type of thing, it's just not about finding out the numbers. It's about the context around those numbers. And it's a really nice example of explaining what's what is important to look at, how you can categorize the style of the player using the numbers and all the argumentation around those numbers. So when I said at the start that this is the method used by many clubs, um, it sounded maybe it's it, well, it is limited. I think lots of clubs could do better if they used more uh, more advanced statistics, but it's about interpreting these statistics. It's looking at the percentiles, ranking the players and finding the style of the players and how they're going to match into the team. And that worked out for Brighton. They saw these statistics and they thought he's going to fit very well into our team and we're willing to pay, pay quite a lot of money to, to sign him. The classic way of presenting these statistics. So this here, are, here they've been presented as bars. I have to say, if 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 the uh, I prefer the bar personally, I prefer the bar presentation. But what's become very standard is to use a radar presentation. And here are the same types of statistics. I've I've taken centre backs as well in this case, and you can go into the Statsbomb website and have a look at them. But Statsbomb have really, and because they're so colourful and nice, but they really made a kind of um, large impact in showing this data on a radar. So instead of having a bar, you basically start at zero and you come out to the edge. So if you're out at the edge, so Mustafi in this particular season, he was the best pressurer of passes. I think if that stretches out all the way, so it's either 95 or 100 percentile there. Uh, possession adjusted tackles, he was also top possession adjusted interceptions, he was also top. Um, or, or he was arguing with Virgil van Dijk about, um, about that position. Virgil van Dijk is top on unpressured long balls, successful long balls um, from defensive situations. Harry Maguire wasn't actually particularly good on these particular metrics. Um, Interesting to see where we are today with these different players. But anyway, the, these are certain particular statistics can be placed on a radar. Now, the reason I'm skeptical to why you should place it on the radar is it can give a, a misleading impression for two reasons. One is that it depends how you order your categories here. So there is a tendency to try and keep to group things which are similar together on these radars. So you have tackles, interceptions, um, this one tackling, which I'm not quite sure of, together. Um, you have passes, XT build up together. So if you're good at passing, you tend to be good at XT build up. We'll come to, back to what that means in a minute. And if you're good at aerial wins percentage, you're likely to be good at aerial wins numbers and you're likely to be good at clearances. So they try and put these things together. But what happens is you end up, when you show these to scouts, they tend to be looking at the area of these things rather than the lengths of these lines. And so it can give a misleading impression about who's a good player and who's a bad player. If you order them in a different way, you sort of get a spiky thing that comes out. So that's one limitation. The other limitation is that these the scale here, so really you if you want to think of the scale of a player you maybe want it to be linear from zero to a hundred a uh, hundred being the best but these scale actually quadratically because you're going out of the circle and you're taking up more and more space of the pi so you're going to have something something that squares with pi r squared uh, for the area in this thing and so harry Maguire. He's in the top 60% in lots of these things. These players are in the top, the other two players are in the top 90%, but his, his circle seems a lot, lot smaller. Um, maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to actually pick out the extremely good players and you want them to catch your eye, but you need to be aware that that's what you're doing. You're exaggerating 
better players. And whenever you put in Virgil van Dijk in any of these things, he just comes out as this massive blob, which makes him look extremely good. And he is very good, but you need to be aware that you're somehow exagger further exaggerating him being extremely good. Um, you can do this with his with um, defensive midfielders. And this is also a nice way, actually. I think, I think one of the advantages now of a play radar is you can pick out the style. So here's Kante, he's good at tackles, interceptions, passing and pressures. And here's Kevin De Bruyne, he's good at progression, XG assisted and so on. Both playing in a midfielder role, although slightly different midfielder roles, but you can see the difference in style um, by the, the difference in where these, these player radars. Um, so I, I, now, now I've got to admit that I've given a lot of criticism to the player radars here, but when I, I regularly use them in working with uh, professional football scouts and so on, because scouts tend to like them and they've become a standard um, tool to a, a large degree um, in analyzing players. So um, they, yeah, and I think as long as you're aware of those limitations, then they're a good tool to use. Brilliant, I was going to explain possession adjustment. Um, great, so the, what you can do is if you've got your StatsBomb or Scout data that you're working with, you can just count up the number of tackles a player does per, um, per minute and that's all that's all very fine but say you're playing for um manchester city where you've always got the ball or you've got the ball um maybe i don't know 70 percent of the time then it's going to make your statistics look worse actions per minute tackles per minute if you're a defender because you don't have to tackle very often because the opposition very seldom have the ball and so in order to find out how good you are at tackling or how many tackles you produce, what you do is you correct it for the possession. So you'll take the, um, you'll take naught point, when you do the division by 90, so you have tackles might be, you might have done 15 tackles and you'll divide by 90 and then you'll, the 90 you'll multiply by 0 0.3 for how long you're in possession. So, so it's um, 15 divided by um, 0 0.3 times 90 together to get the possession adjusted. There may be other way, more sophisticated ways of doing it. I don't know exactly how StatsBomb do it, but the idea is to, um, is to adjust the stats for the fact that you uh, have, haven't got the ball or have got the ball, depending what the, um, what the stat is. Um, so could you explain the possession? Yes, and are these stats team adjusted in a way? Yeah, I mean, you know, he would. Uh, that's really one of the big, uh, the big problems, again, almost with everything. And that's why context of these, these things are important. So when, um, when, for example, when, for example, Brighton of Albion are scouting Adam Webster, and they see that his um, passes in the final third are the highest in the championship, the first thing that they have to think about is what type of football are Brit Bristol City playing? If they are playing a game, maybe, maybe for example, if they're playing with three centre backs, if they're playing with a back three, and one of those centre backs' his responsibility is to run up and attack and be part of um, attacking situations, then that might be the reason that Adam Webster has more passes in the final third. It's just that he's an attacking um, centre back, uh, or he's he's in a system where all of them are attacking centre back. So you you have to compare to the other players in the team. Definitely, you have to look at the context. There is unfortunately no data way of solving those types of problems. Um, I think I didn't answer the question in the end about comparing different leagues. It's just a problem that is. You, I think there's two ways of solving it. Either there's a the human interpretation. You just have to remember the quality of different leagues. Scouts always know this very well. They have a very good idea of the different qualities of the league. You can use, for example, transfer, transfer marked. The value of players in the different leagues is a good proxy. I would say that's probably the best one you can do, but you have to adjust for that and put that later into your model. Um, and then the system, you just have to account for these things. It isn't that you, it isn't that you have a, 
and this is something which comes up a lot in this course, it isn't that you ha I have an algorithm for working out what how Kevin De Bruyne would work in Burnley. Actually, funnily enough, Opta, I recently heard Opta claim they had such types of algorithms. There isn't really an algorithm for working how, how Kevin De Bruyne works in Burnley. Um, that's a combination of using, using data, um, using models, and then intuition and understanding of the game is the last thing that, that comes into it. 